speaking about the young men in this program uh, is something that we we are extremely proud about. You know, the Dogs with Pups program is our movement, our initiative, and our guys have taken an awesome approach to it. They've really embraced serving this community. Uh, we're trying, we're consistently trying to enhance the culture, no matter what it is. You know, Coach Smart always talks about, you know, putting ourselves in an uncomfortable or discomfort position to continue to grow. And when, when, when you look at it, you know, they've really taken ownership in terms of being intentional and serving this community. And, and just a recap of what we were able to accomplish last year, you know, starting with the, uh, the internet drive, you know, we were, we were able to raise over a hundred grand to give um, kindergarten through eighth graders internet so they can attend school virtually, you know, which was huge for them. The snack drive, we were able to, to raise uh, almost 30,000 pounds of food. <laughs> and when it came to the cold drive, we're talking about 437 coats donated. And for Christmas, we were able to adopt a hundred families uh, to buy Christmas presents for. So, you know, it, it's, been, it's, it's been an awesome deal under the leadership of, of Josh Brooks and Coach Smart. I think our guys have really embraced, you know, this responsibility and, you know, we, we've empowered them to continue to serve the community. You know, now I take any, any questions. All right, let's uh, begin with the questions. We'll try to move rapidly to uh, get on to the other assistant coaches as well. Let's start out with uh, Dean Leggy and then Mike Griffith. Coach, uh, Kirby was talking about the development of players, mental, mental development, mental toughness and so forth. How big an offseason is this for George specifically? He's had some stuff in the past where he's he's kind of the water squirting and so forth. How big a deal, though, is it for George to progress off the field, on the field, on that front? Well, it's just one of a continued growth and maturity, and he has embraced it. Um, and, and when you look at our entire team, you know, when you talk about altruism, I think there's this, uh, this, this aura of selflessness, just this positive vibe, which is really – you know, continue to grow, you know, it is it's really shine brighter. And so for him, he's embraced that. And so I'm looking forward to how he continues to move forward. Coach, I'll ask you about another player that uh, kind of came on uh, towards the end of last year. A lot of people excited about Arian Smith. Last night, Eric Stokes uh, officially uh, declared that he is indeed the fastest guy uh, in the program. Where, where is Arian at and what skills does he need to add, um, you know, to be a more effective receiver? Well, you know, just like any young receiver, just understanding the technique of how to play the position, continue to grow from a football awareness and a knowledge of the playbook and how he fits in a grand scheme of things. And he's really embraced as his offseason. You know, as you look at it, with, with really all of our guys, we didn't have opportunity with, with spring football last year. And, you know, now these guys get to learn off of cutups from last year of what we put on tape. And so that's really big with all our guys. And we're looking for Aaron to continue to grow, you know, as a receiver. All right, let's go to uh, Seth Emerson and then Anthony Dasher. Cortez, you could probably talk a longer time about this. Uh, so sorry for such a wide ranging question, but with everything that happened last summer with racial and social justice awareness, did did that become an important point for, for you and Kirby to talk and people within the program to talk about what you could do and, and how do you, is there an effort to continue that so it wasn't just a 2020 thing? Absolutely. You know, what our guys is not just about developing them from an academic standpoint or athletically. We want to make sure that we give them a, a platform to express their feelings. And it's also about education and provide providing awareness. And that's the only way that we can impact any type of change is, is one, educating and making sure people are aware of what's going on in this country. And also just, you know, acknowledging, it. you know, we all have the right to feel a certain way and we wanna make sure we, eat, we embrace each other's opinions. Hey coach, I wanna ask you just a little bit about, about Demetrius Robertson, of course, you don't wanna take advantage of the uh, waiver rule and come back. Uh, he not really quite, I guess, lived up, I guess, you know, maybe fans' expectations for him, but what do you still see what he can do to help your program, help your receivers? I think D-Rob brings a, a veteran presence to our room. He's a guy who has versatility because he can play multiple positions. He also embraces his role on special teams. So from that standpoint, you know, we talk about some of the things about being selfless. You know, he displays that every single day, you know, with his actions. And so when you have a guy who's willing to come back, 
and you know, and, and, and really embrace his role on his team, and he's going to continue to compete. You know, you you, you got to be excited about. It. All right, let's go to uh, Jake Rowe and then Mark Weiser. Sorry, it took me a second to get unmuted there. Uh, Coach Hankton, uh, when you look at your bringing back so many guys, Kirby talked about it a minute ago, how it's just not, you know, a, a guarantee of success. But at the same time, it's probably better than bringing back nobody. Um, how, do you, how are you feeling about all the guys that you are bringing back and, and the guys and what they were able to show you, guys like Kiaris and Jermaine Burton and, and having that continuity there from year to year? Well, it's, it's definitely huge because you, you, you're in a situation where you have the opportunity to be under the same offense coordinator going into the second season. And so that being in itself, these guys are going to have the opportunity to continue to get be better. Now, you know, granted, we are talented and you see some some flashes of some things, but, you know, we have to become more consistent at the position and there are some things that we can improve on, you know, and so we can't be complacent or comfortable just because we have the skill set to perform at a high level. We need to make sure day in and day out we compete and be very intentional about getting better on the things that we can improve on. Cortez, when you talk about getting better, uh, you, you guys obviously went up against uh, Florida uh, last season, Alabama teams with very explosive offenses. Given it, that it's a second year for you guys with with Coach Munkin, uh, how much uh, does that kind of raise the bar to, to keep getting better and, and uh, being more productive? You know, it, well, it just goes back to taking it one day at a time. You know, we learn from the things that, you know, we didn't do well last year. You know, as a staff, we look over some things like, what can we improve on? How can we get better? And we just try to apply that to how we move forward. You know, whether it's in our off-season strength and conditioning program, the things we're doing from a mental standpoint, or when we get on the grass in terms of the football concepts, you know, there are always going to be areas in where we can improve. And, you know, that's something that we want to continue to push forward. You know, the only thing we can worry about right now is how, you know, we perform in a team run the next day. And then when spring ball gets here, we're going to attack that in a different manner. But, you know, the thing that's going to remain consistent is that every single day we're trying to improve in something. All right, let's go to Chip Towers and then uh, Roddy Nabalsi. Yeah, Coach, I just assumed you touched on the, the snacks and the Wi-Fi and the coats and, and the Christmas families. Is there, is there another initiative uh, waiting around the corner of, the, of this spring? Yeah, well, we're, we're, cur we're current in um, the planning phase of providing program just really providing education for our guys on local charities and what, what we're trying to, what they're trying to accomplish. Also identifying immediate needs where we can make the biggest impact. Uh, uh, if there is an aspect where we want to do some mentoring. Now, of course, there's always the restrictions and the challenges with COVID, but also trying to find a way that we can organize and do that from a virtual standpoint. Because, you know, anytime we connect our guys with the youth, and just to be that positive role model for them, I think that speaks to one of the values that we always talk about, and that's the connections piece and just finding ways to connect to the community. So we have some things on the horizon, and, and you know we'll 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 be able to reveal them in the next couple of weeks. Coach, you spoke at length about uh, some of the initiatives your guys are doing and some of the uh, great works and uh, philanthropic issues that they're uh, involved in. Can you give me? Uh, two questions here. One, can you give me how you teach them to take that beyond the local community? A lot of that seems to be Athens located because that's where they are. How did they take that back home with them? And two, can you give us some names of these guys, you know, who's kind of uh, spearheaded this? I mean, I'm not telling you to you know, do each and every one of them, but can you give us a couple names of the guys who really kind of stepped up for this? Well, well, first, you know, we're talking about some things that we want to roll out and just finding ways to expand it, you know, outside of Clark County. Uh, we, we do want to touch as, as, as many people as we can in this great state of Georgia. Uh, the next part is, you know, in terms of the individuals, we look at this thing collectively. And we have a bunch of guys that, that have been involved. You know, you, you think about some of our veteran leadership, you know, whether it's Jamari or Kiaris who really embraced it. But it, it's so many more guys that we can discuss and talk about. You know, because this is something that our guys came up, they wanted to do this. They, they wanted to embrace the opportunity to give back and serve the communities, you know. And so, you know, I'm proud of the guys for even coming up with this. 
Okay, we're going to take uh, just maybe two more questions. Let's go to uh, Connor Riley and then uh, Brandon Sudge. Hey, Cortez, two of your wide receivers, Dominic Blaylock and Marcus Rosemey Jack saying they both suffered season ending uh, injuries last season. Where are they sort of at physically and even more importantly so, I think mentally, given you know they had to deal with those injuries on top of everything else that 2020 threw at them? Well, physically, you know, they're, you know, Ron Course and our training staff have done an amazing job you know, with those guys, they can't, you know, they're working to come back. We do have a return to play protocol and, you know, they're right on schedule, you know, but from a mental standpoint, I mean, they'll be awesome. I mean, in terms of being positive and just having the energy to fight to come back and being around the guys and helping any way that they can. I mean, those, those guys are definitely two of the more just <laughs> positive um, football savvy guys to especially help the younger guys. So, any way that they've been able to help from a mental standpoint in terms of co coaching the younger guys up ha has been a huge plus for us. Hey, uh, Court has uh, following up on a uh, question from earlier. So, like from a personal standpoint, like as you saw everything unfold um, over the summer last year, how did that hit you personally, and how did that motivate you to kind of want to be? Um, like an architect of these efforts and help out um, like with all these efforts? Well, when you see some of the things that, that, that occur, you know, emotionally, you know, th there's a, a wave of different emotions, you know, from, from anger, hurt, frustration. Um, you know, when, when, when those things come up, you, you try to find a way to, to really redirect it in a, in a positive manner. And the, the way that we, we best felt to do that was to really provide an open forum for our guys just to clearly co communicate their emotions, you know, because I knew how I felt. And we wanted those guys to feel in a, uh, be comfortable in a space where they can talk about anything that they want to. And, you know, through that, it has really helped our team become closer. You know, when you're talking about a connection with each other, really understanding a, a background, of, you know, where guys came from, understanding their why in terms of the motivation of, you know, why they play this game. I think that part is huge. And so, you know, as, as we grow to, together, we continue to impact the people around us in a, in a positive manner. For more Dog Nation videos, check out youtube.com slash dognation.